You hear that? It almost sounds like when it gets down to the wooden. <laughs> yeah, right. It does. There's a couple ways that we can you know, grab that cheek block. Plucking, yeah, it does. It does, yeah. yeah it sounds pretty awful. Yeah, this is the worst area. So they say that Yamaha is is really bright, right? Generally, so if we just play, just kind of as a, a comparison. It sounds warm by comparison, right? I hope that's coming through on the on my on my little lapel mic, but it's I guess suffice it to say if it's not coming through it's it's like obnoxious, like painful. Okay, there are a, a couple of different ways to, to do voicing. You can use steam. We're gonna talk about needles today and hammers they're all kind of different some some accept accept the needles really easily and others don't and some some respond really well to needles and others don't and I have no idea which one this is going to be so we're just going to experiment it seems to be the most effective it's it's a hassle and you kind of have to get you just have to like experiment with it and try it out and and sort of get the feel for it and you have to break a few needles to sort of get the hang of it. Uh, and even, even after you've done it a fair amount, you'll still probably break some needles. So this is the, the voicing block we're gonna put in there. So let's just start by putting in a few stitches. That's what, that's what each poke is called, is called a stitch. We'll put in a few stitches and just kind of see how it responds. I'm going to I'm going to focus. I'll start by focusing in this in this section here. So so you kind of you kind of want to aim for the core more or less. And and at least at first we're going to avoid this upper area except for except for some just kind of what they call sugar coating, which is just like poking very very shallow in the very top. So first thing I'm going to do when I come to a piano that I have no idea how the, how the hammers are going to respond is I'm just going to start prodding around and experimenting and see, see what happens. Are you going in kind of deep? Yeah, I'm, I'm putting a good amount of pressure. So let's go, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I think it's a combination of, so the question is, is it because of time? Do they need voicing because of time or is it a manufacturing thing? And I think it's a matter of like how the, how the hammers were manufactured combined with time, so both. And, and then they also seem to generally brighten up after you reshape them. So, so this, is, this is something that I want you guys to, to definitely experiment with. What I've, what I've noticed is that on the, on the pianos that we've refurbished where we reshape them but we don't voice them, they, they generally just sit and people don't, people don't like them, they don't buy them. And then, and then I'll, I'll notice it, like a customer will come in and they'll, and they'll, play, they'll play a chord or two and then they'll just reject it instantly and I'll, and I'll kind of make a note to self. All right, I got to voice that. I'll voice it, and then it'll it'll suddenly become a popular piano that will sell much more quickly. Voice. 
voicing is one of those things that, like tuning, people don't realize. So okay, I went I went down to C sharp. So I just did C sharp to B. So let's see. We, I have no idea how it's how that how those hammers are going to respond to to that first kind of initial uh, experiment. So voicing is one of those things. What I was saying, where where people don't realize it, but if a piano is not in tune, then then a, a potential customer is going to reject the piano instantly, and they're going to think they're going to they're going to make sweeping um, uh, judgments on on this piano and on often often the entire brand or li like like if someone plays a high loon and it's out of tune they'll say they'll say yep i knew it chinese junk it's all chinese junk you know <laughs> just because it's out of tune and voicing is is one of those things as well that people will make massive sweeping judgments all right let's see what happened so that one is not voiced okay it's it's a little better but ever s yeah it's yeah it's pretty bad It's not voiced, and that's just really bad. And this is only bad. So let's do let's do some on the rear. So this one needs a lot. I find that I find that doing these on the shoulders is is a good preliminary test to see how the hammers are going to respond and we'll get more, we'll get increasingly aggressive. And I'm guessing that this piano is going to need some significant aggression aggression on the voicing to get them a little bit more reasonable now the voicing ha uh, voicing tool that I that I got is didn't I get an adjustable one yeah. those are much better I think I sacrificed my <laughs> I had my I had an adjustable voicing tool this is this is so um, I had an adjustable voicing tool for for several years that I kept in my toolkit and I thought oh I'm being selfish and so I uh, put it in the voicing tools and it broke like a week later <laughs> you know? so, so I got two and I got two more those are the tools that uh, that are upstairs still but it's still pretty awful let's do some I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit of this is this is where I start getting a little bit more um, aggressive so generally I'm gonna I'm gonna have the angle this direction or on the other side of the shoulder that direction so I'm gonna do a couple stitches sort of more angled in this in this direction rather than there and just kind of I'll give it a maybe three I don't know something like that are you can you get near the Almost near the strike point. Pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah. Uh, 
Another part of practicing is knowing how to support the hammer, knowing how hard to push so you don't poke yourself and you bleed. Um, yeah, I've done that many times. Yeah, extracting the hammer from the, or extracting the needle from the hammer. Okay, normally at this point, because, because the changes so far have been so slight, normally at this point I would probably just like go crazy. But I just want to, for the sake of kind of giving you an idea for what each, what each step does, I'm just going to listen between each step. do some steam. All right, I'm going to do some aggressive aggressive sugar coating. Usually sugar coating that's that's kind of a contradiction in terms because sugar coating is supposed to be non-aggressive. Yeah, just right on the strike point. Right on the strike point. <laughs> Shattered. I know. What happens if it's not that bad and you go too far? What does that do to them? You can bring it back. With or what, what will it do with like the sound and things? Oh, it would kill it. It would it would make it mushy, and and you wouldn't have what's referred to as as the bloom. How do you or you. Hmm? How do you fix that? You can you can like you if you want to bring it back. It? Yeah, you can you can refile. You can hit it with with the other side, which which you want to often do anyway. Um, Build up the shoulders with, you can use some, um, the, those crystals that you dissolve in acetone. Have you seen those in the back? And then you drop them in, the, the, the little pr plastic crystals that dissolve in acetone, and then, you, and then you kind of put a few drops on the shoulders, and the acetone with the plastic inside of it gets in the hammers, and it saturates it, and then the acetone flashes away, and it leaves the plastic behind to sort of bolster up the the ham the the uh, shoulders, and that helps. Wouldn't also that pro belt so they use for key bushings help a little bit? I don't know. I haven't experimented with that very much. That's a good question. I've even in a pinch, I've even done super glue on the not on the very top because that'll like just absolutely mm -hmm. destroy the tone. But in the shoulders, you can do like a drop kind of, of super like glue. Old ones that come in and yeah. they have that, or mm -hmm. even that little piece of metal. <laughs> little piece of metal. Yeah. On the hammer? Yeah, it's like one of those very, like, paper nails. I don't know what they're called. But it's like a circle. Oh. A metal circle. Like a tech. Yeah. Okay. On the hammer. To I support. think that was on purpose, like for a bar sound. Or oh, whatever. I see. Okay, yeah, that's a different thing. <laughs> that's not to. That's not no, for that's voicing. Required. That's for a specific sound for that, like, yeah, okay. the bar sound. Okay. out a little bit. It's pretty bad, huh? So let's just give this one a little bit more. with 
there with these. Do you want to do you want to try Steam and see what happens? Steam doesn't. Steam is a little bit risky. Does that just make it puffier? Yeah, it does. Sure. Yeah, I've done steam a lot at people's homes. On a piano that's this bad, steam might not be a bad idea because you just have to bring the entire bass line down. Should be fairly permanent. Um, I don't know. Probably until it needs to be reshaped again. does depend. Sometimes you reshape it and it sounds great. Sometimes not. Yeah, that's that's where the artiste comes in. Yeah, that's right. So this is what I was referring to, where you use the back of the thing. If you if you run into issues with some notes that are not exactly mated, like like I'm wondering if if that one has a mating problem, meaning meaning the the hammer is is not hitting all three strings evenly, but it's you know angled like that maybe. Then you can you can reshape it 
so that it's back flat and it's hitting the strings more evenly. That can that can help with with issues in there. How can you tell that it's the finger? How can you tell what? That it's only like because it is hitting all three strings, but not at the same time. So yeah. How can you notice when it's hitting those two? So if you if you put your finger on the on the jack like on the jack toe underneath the jack toe right under the button and then kind of push it up to where the hammer is touching it then you can like this one yeah. Kind of the middle. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So that, I think that would be, that would be bearable. Try it. 